Okay, so continuing with our big list and next is water container. So luckily they had this at my local art shop and they, they gave this to me, which was very kind of them. But a plastic bottle is fine. It's not going to make any difference to your paintings. So plastic bottle is good. Next, paper. So paper is a big deal, right? People really worry about it. And in some ways you should worry about it. And in some ways you shouldn't. So what do I mean by that confusing sentence? Sorry. So what I mean is don't use cheap watercolor paper. However, look at this. This is a multimedia drawing book. Yeah. Now this on this paper, I can do amazing paintings that I can even sell. It's really, really good. And it's half the price of normal watercolor paper, half the price. This cost me about maybe $10. And it's got about, I don't know, 15, maybe 20, maybe 20 sheets in it, a lot, probably 20 or more sheets of paper in it. So it's really, really good. And it's really important because, um, okay, I didn't want to do too much detail, but this is why. When you paint watercolors, often you're going to feel a little bit nervous about doing a good painting. Now, if you're working on paper that's a bit expensive, I can guarantee you, you're not going to paint as freely as you would on fairly cheap paper. And watercolor pa painting is not like oil painting. With oil painting, you can just repaint, repaint, repaint until you get what you're looking for. Watercolor is a bit like one chance. So if you don't make that stroke with a kind of brazen indifference, couldn't care less, bold manner, then you're not going to make a good painting. So that's why this is really essential. And you know, this is a golden tip in my opinion. Don't buy the watercolor paper yet. Buy one of these multimedia pads and get good at uh, doing paintings on this. Really, really confident, brave paintings. Experiment, yeah? So I don't, I don't wanna talk too much about that because I can talk about that forever. The, the only drawback with that kind of paper is it's thin. So if you are a little aggressive with it, like if you rub on it or try to scrape on it with your fingernail or a spatula, then there is a good chance that it will tear. So it's not very tough. So I'm not against normal watercolor paper, but I just think at first when you're a beginner and an amateur and even semi-professional like me, it's still good to use. I use it all the time because I still can't paint with the same, what do you call it? The same abandonment um, on normal watercolor paper as I can on this cheaper paper. And it really, really shows. So I just have to tell you that. But when you, but please do try normal watercolor paper. So you probably haven't got this where you are. Oh my goodness, it's shiny. It's called Watson, yeah? So basically this is the main paper my art store sells. And um, there are two kinds of paper, right? There's uh, wood pulp and there's cotton. So I go for cotton because it absorbs the water. With wood pulp, it just stays on the top a long time. And I just, I just don't like that. So wood pulp papers are very cheap, but I just don't like them. They're okay, but I'm not mad on them. So I recommend the cotton watercolor papers. And I recommend, look, this is 239 grams. I hope you can see that. Sorry about this. There you go, 239 grams. So normally 300 grams is best, but you can get away with lighter ones. And this is really, really good. This paper's really, really good. So 
you will have to experiment with watercolour papers to find your favourite so that can't be helped and there are many different names and different brands so please try them out. One good thing is some people sell pads that have a variety of different papers in them, different brands. So that is really good to get and sometimes they, they can be cheaper than normal paper. Now, I don't know why but they can be so if you can find them then buy them. So um, I used to use, is it Saunders and Waterford, which is wonderful watercolour paper, but it's very expensive. So I just decided to start using this cheaper one, Watson, which is made by Japan, which is a country where I live. And they just make a lot of quite cheap watercolour products, but they're also good quality. So my paints also are Holbein, which are good quality, they're Japanese, but they're also the cheapest you can buy, for quality that is, with quality. And the other thing about paper is, I don't like loose paper, I don't like pads, uh, because um, around the edges where they put the glue, I just find it's a bit funny with the uh, water the water's not like flowing freely in around the edge. So that, that's annoying for me. And also they buckle. They're not supposed to buckle, but my watercolour pads, they all buckle. And I, and I think that's true of Saunders and Waterford too. So that was really annoying. Um, if you look carefully, what I use are spiral bound pads with two clips on the bottom. So I find what happens is when I wet that paper, then uh, it expands. I can take my clips off and then reapply them after the paper's stretched out or expanded. And I never have buckling problems with these pads. So that's, that's just from my experience. And um, so I think that's really, really helpful. <laughs> so yeah, the next thing is clips that you apply to your paper. And then after that, you need a rag. So you need, um, it can be from old t-shirts or shirts, or you can buy them from your, I don't know what you have in America or England, but here we have Daiso. And everything in Daiso is like $1 or one pound. And you can get cloth, cloths, rags from that shop. And um, I really recommend doing that. I also do that because they're super cheap and you really need rags for wiping your brush on when you do watercolor painting. So the next thing is tissue. Tissue is really good. So don't skimp on this. So you need tissue for cleaning up messes, cleaning up your palette, but also as uh, with your paper, when you're painting, if you make a mistake, you can quickly, if you're very quick, wipe it off with the tissue and it will remove almost all of the paint. It depends on the staining strength of the paint. Some paints really stain the paper and some are a bit milder. But if you're really quick, you can just erase a wrong mark. So tissue is excellent for that and nothing else is going to be as good as that. Do not use toilet paper, it goes bitty. Tissue paper doesn't. And kitchen roll is too thick and clumsy because the other thing you can do with the tissue is you can do the um, lighting on clouds, rim lighting around clouds. So in a future video, I'll probably show you how to do that. But you can also after you finish painting something, if it's too strong in tone, you can go over it with water and then wipe it or basically pat it or tap it, not tap it, pat it gently with your tissue and or wipe it gently with your tissue and it will make it fainter. So tissue is an excellent thing that you really, really need. Please use tissue. Here I wrote cleaning tissue, but to be honest, you don't need cleaning tissue. It's probably because I'm from Japan and they're so serious about cleanliness. You can just use a spray bottle on your fingers and then wipe it 
wipe the paint off with some tissue. So sometimes your fingers will get dirty, you'll get paint on your fingers, you'll get paint on your brushes. So sometimes you need to spray it so and then wipe it with tissue. So that leads me to my next item which is a spray bottle. So again I got this from Daiso so this is like 100 yen, one dollar, one pound. It's really important, really important. Why? Okay so why is it important? Because when you're painting sometimes your paint will dry out very quickly. When that happens you can't continue, you have to stop. But if you spray above it, do not spray, spray directly at your paint, spray above it so it falls down onto the paint. Um, so if you spray on your paint, it will keep it wet for a longer time and so you can do more work on it and keep going with it. And you'll be surprised sometimes by how quickly the paint can dry out. It's absolutely essential. Also, it's good for cleaning out your palette, spraying your palette, and if you get your hands dirty, but it's also very good for creating texture in your painting. So if you spray something, you'll get little drops and it will create this lovely little pattern on your paint if you time it correctly. But timing it correctly is a fine art and difficult to do but it's really really good fun and it can look really really beautiful so a spray bottle is essential.